I want a good, clean, hard fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. You're welcome. Bernardo Osuna alongside Bernard Hopkins. We see Eddie Gomez go over to the red corner and get down on one knee. I can only imagine what he's going through right now, the rush of emotions. But nonetheless, he's a human being who is in mourning. His father passed away October 13th. He was supposed to be on this trip. They were supposed to leave Saturday. Eddie moved the trip to Sunday. His father passed Listo. away last Saturday. Ready. How do you deal with something Listo, like please. that, B-Hop? Well, you got to take it all in perspective and understand that your dad, as he mentioned, will want him to take a fight and continue to go on. Eddie's a strong young fighter, even though he's been um, in some fights where he had to make those adjustments. I think this is an adjustment that's different, but I think he was just right. All right, Beto, a lot going through the mind of Eddie Gomez as he steps in for this eight-round fight. Yeah, on his trunks, he has a patch that says, this is for you, Pops, you see on the back of his trunks. Also, he's taking the first flight out tomorrow. As soon as he lands in New York, they're going to bury his father. Yeah, he told us that everything was on hold, but he knew that his family would understand that he had to handle his business tonight. And that's what he's trying to do against Shoki Sakai who's been in Mexico City for the last 10 years. He's originally from Japan, and he really has taken to the culture of Mexico and become a Nacho Berenstain type fighter. The Hall of Famer, you see the, that high guard, the Juan Manuel Marquez, Ricardo Finito Lopez, Rafael Marquez style. Uh, and in front of him, he's got an Eddie Gomez who wants to break through that. Eddie has a really good, good, like, sort of a style that can be a little fancy, but he likes to put his punches together as the round go on. Look for some explosive punches and combinations coming from Eddie Gomez. Both fighters feel a lot more comfortable counter-punching, and that's where Eddie's done a lot of his damage as he connects down to the body and then with a left hook as Sakai was pulling straight back. Yeah, Eddie is a good, good counter-puncher, but he also has that sort of what we call cute style. I mean, he can fake you, give you fakes, come here, turn you around. And you know, when you look at Eddie, you look at, you know, you see like a Pinnell Whitaker. Not that he's Pinnell Whitaker, but he has that sort of peekaboo, sort of slide to the left, slide to the right style. And he can hit you with any unorthodox punch from anywhere. Mihab, you can't just be taking the, the lyrics from the cha-cha slide to the left and slide to the right and use them on our broadcast. Come on, we got to pay rights fees now. because I know, man. That cha-cha is, is, is good if you can use it. I never, good, I never had that type of foot movement. But, you know, when you look at Eddie again, he's sharp. He has that quick reflexes, and he's paying attention to everything that's going on in front of him. And he's been able to push back Sakai, so you could see the physical strength of Eddie Gomez. He talked about uh, incorporating weight training and conditioning for this fight, and you just see how sharp and focused he is early on. Yeah, Sakai got his hands up, but he's not firing off those punches that Eddie Gomez is throwing. He must time Eddie Gomez coming in. Then he would get a reaction where he can at least have a moment to get his, his, his parents to throw his punches as he tried to do this now. Time! Joey Valle, the trainer of Eddie Gomez, was extremely happy with the work his pupil did here in round number one. Gomez did not use a stool. He stood up for the entire uh, minute break between rounds one and two. And uh, Sakai, in their corner, they're looking for him to get more active, B-Hop. Yeah, they are, but Eddie Gomez was giving some good instructions in the corner. He's letting those hands go, work the body, and work up. I mean, that's his fight. That's where he's gonna be most effective. And Sakati, Sakati is one of those guys that's going to peekaboo, come in and try to see if he can get something when he get there. That's a little too late when you fight a guy like Eddie, Eddie Gomez because he's doing things like this. And if he just counter him when he do those punches like he just did, that's is going to be effective as the round go on for Eddie Gomez. Nice two-punch combination on the counter from Eddie Gomez. And Sakai, he actually sparred Alejandro Barrera, who defeated Gomez 
in July of 2017. So he tried to get some insight from his stablemate in Mexico. He and Sakai was actually stopped by Barrera in the fourth round in February of 2014. So he's, they're both very familiar with the same fighter, but this time he was in Sakai's corner giving him some insight into Gomez. Yeah, he's taking that can carry over to this fight, but what I want to see uh, Eddie Gomez do is just take that half a step back when, it's the, when the time comes and throw that right up a cut and left hook and spin out because when you look at his stance, he's there to counter every time Sakai comes up and gets close, but he don't punch when he gets there. And so that's when Eddie Gomez can take advantage of that opening. You know, Eddie Gomez talked about how the birth of his daughter really made him focus, change his life and his outlook completely. And you see that maturity. And tonight you see the intensity fighting for in memory of his father who passed away October 13th. I mean, it's been less than a week and here he is handling his business. He's done a lot of growing up recently. He understands that, you know, he's a man in a man's sport. You know, he could have went and canceled the fight and went on his business and took care of his father, which would have, been, would have been, you know, understandable. But, you know, this is what Eddie wants to do. He knows what his father wants. He knows what he wants. And I commend him for that. And now he's putting the work in. Nice right uppercut counter from Eddie Gomez as Sakai was coming in trying to attack. And, and it seems like Sakai's a little puzzled by the speed of Eddie Gomez. And when you look at the package, he's, he's a short, stout fighter, Eddie Gomez but he's got quick hands, he's got a big physical body, so he's got all the tools, just had trouble putting it together at times. Ring generalship, and if he continues to do that, he's gonna look like this. He's putting off the ropes and do things. Round two coming up to an end in a scheduled eight round bout. Through the first two rounds of our fight between Eddie Gomez and Shoki Sakai. Let's take a look at how many punches have been thrown and landed through the first two rounds. We're now in round three alongside Bernard Hopkins. I'm Bernardo Osuna. And Shoki Sakai trying to establish that jab. He's got the height advantage. Reach advantage, though, is in favor of Eddie Gomez. And here we see how many punches have been thrown. Better clip for Gomez so far, only 14 of 51 for Shoki Sakai. He really needs to get more active. And that's exactly what Nacho Beristein has been asking of Shoki Sakai in the corner. Sakai needs to get active with that jab because he has a good jab. He keeps it up high. He don't keep it down low like most fighters would do after two rounds go by. He keeps it up high, but he must fire from there. And more than one, he must fire two or three jabs from there, at least to have Eddie Gomez trying to navigate around it, and then he snipped the right hand in. As a car establishes that jab, then the right hand will come right behind it when he needs to throw it, or when he wants to throw it. The guy getting pushed back once again, trying to find an opening in the guard of Eddie Gomez. Sakai's giving one look, and that look is hands up, coming forward, but not actually doing anything with his movement or his hands. And Sakai walking into something right now. He's going to start walking in right hands, left folks. And Eddie Gomez is real sharp, he's real alert, and he's looking for that. There's a headbutt there, and Sakai working on the left eye there. Beto, what's going on in uh, Eddie Gomez's corner? They notice the same thing Bernard just mentioned right now. How his guard is really high, so they're telling him, go to the body, go to the body, and also they feel like he can use the uppercut to split the guard, just like with that body shot there. Also, one thing, Bernard, he doesn't sit between rounds. They said the entire camp, they sparred like that where they don't believe that he needs a stool. They said it's a mentality thing with him. Yeah, Derek O'Connell doing great work alongside Danny Baye. And more importantly, he said, man, they sparred up to 15 rounds at a time uh, for this fight. His father was always there with him. He would make the drive from New York all the way to Connecticut to the gym. And he said, we'd make the sparring partners wait until my pops got there and uh, out, of, out of a sign of respect. But you just see the conditioning and the work that Eddie Gomez has been doing in the gym playing out here in the first three rounds. When I seen Eddie Gomez for the first time, I seen his style, I seen his movement. I mean, really, really like urban Philadelphia type of style. I mean, he can fight either way. He can box, he can punch, he can be cute in there, he can be slick. I mean, this is ring generalship at his best. He can also have his chin tested. Just Sakai hasn't thrown the right combinations or the right punch early on. And you mentioned it's total dominance through three rounds. 
boxing wise from Eddie Gomez. So boxing Hall of Famer Nacho Beristain make his way down those steps. I mean, it's impressive. He tells us, B-Hop, at 5.30 a.m., I'm in the gym. I'm there before my assistants, and I tell him, hey, you guys should be in here before the old man. But my consistency, that what, that's what made me a Hall of Famer. That's what made me successful, and that's what I like to transmit to my fighters. And you go to the Romanza gym, and Don Nacho doesn't take anything from anybody. Definitely. You have to be disciplined, you have to be respectful, and you have to love your craft. Definitely wired from the old school. He spoke clearly about that. I mean, that's where it is missing in, in certain boxing right now. And when you see guys like like Bernstein, like who has that type of experience and understand how it is. He's a gym early, like you said, and probably the last one to leave. Yep. I mean, it's, it's craft. It's a man who really loves what he does. That's what's keeping him alive. He says it keeps him vibrant. Uh, and, you know, he's got great success, over 25 world champions as a professional. Nacho. And he loves Bernard Hopkins. He said, this guy's a wizard. You got mad respect for what you're doing. Right now, you got to respect what Gomez is doing inside the ring. He's practically toying with Sakai with his speed and with his precise punching. That wisdom, man, and, and that wizard type of mentality that he's having. Look, and Eddie Gomez is the better boxer. We know that. Better movement. Sharper puncher. Um, I like to see him settle down a little bit more and really commit his punches. He don't need to really back up and, and not run, but not be there. When he sits in the pocket like that, he can get harder shots, and he's quick enough not to get hit with anything back. This is the Eddie Gomez that I fell in love with early when I seen him. He's so slick, so swift. He can sit in the pocket and counter a guy with this type of speed or lack of and counter him anytime he wants to. Just see that. Cobra strike with the right hand that he landed on the face of Shoki Sakai, who keeps coming forward. You know, and once again, it's the same shot. When Sakai lunges, Gomez is there to take the shot. And Sakai, he's a really durable fighter, but he lacks power. And we see how good he can take those shots. Not only that, he's predictable. Everything is up, punches up, his hands up, which is good. But with a, a, a guy like Eddie Gomez can see those punches coming from where they at. And know what? He'll get beat at he'll get beat every time. Sakat will get beat every time. Yeah, Sakai's a type of fighter who tends to walk down his opponents, pressure them. He's got a high work rate. But the boxing skill of Gomez is giving him trouble, and so is now a bloody nose. And that bloody nose comes for those right hands, those lead runner hands. Halfway through this fight with Bernard Hopkins, I'm Bernardo Osuna. It's Gomez and Sakai inside the ring. A great cut, man. I mean, he does everything in that corner. Although he's got Jaime Quintana in there as his assistant, he just takes control once the fighter comes to his corner. This round, I believe that Eddie Gomez is going to sit in the pocket and he's going to throw four or five punches because he know now the speed is there. He know what he can touch him with. And, you know, some rounds went by. And Zakari has not really been aggressive like he was earlier, but he's not throwing his hands. And he's waiting for Eddie to stop punching. All right, 42% clip of punches landed by Gomez compared to 32% for Sakai. But it's the quantity of punches as well as the quality of punches as Gomez has doubled up on the amount of punches landed here through the first half of the fight. I think that Eddie Gomez should throw a left hook when he throws that right hand. And now try to see if he can get more mileage out of it because the right hand is, is missing his target, but the left hook has not even been, been watched by Sakai. There's a nice counter right from Eddie Gomez, setting up Sakai to come forward and get caught. You got the string on the bone, and he's just pulling it every time he get close to it. And you know what? Eddie Gomez is so good at this, this type of fight right now because it's up to him now whether he want to fight in the pocket, fight on the move, or, or just pop shot as he worked the ring generalship. So I like to see him continue to like settle down a little bit more, throw combinations, and try to make a statement. Giving Sakai some respect as the Japanese fighter who is based in Mexico City comes back with a nice jab, but 
It's just the frequency of punches and the efficiency is not there for Sakai in this fight. He's really having trouble with the movement and quick strikes from Gomez, who now works to the body with a right hand when he faints with the left. Sakai is flat-footed, so he's not going to beat him on the speed of feet. He's not going to beat him on the hand speed, the ring generalship. I w if I was Sakai, I would just try to make it a rough and, and tough fight and just crowd Gomez. You see the quick combinations from Gomez. Head movement. Putting on a clinic is Eddie Gomez. Sakai continued to have his earmuffs on, and he can't fire quick enough to, to make Eddie Gomez pay. Even when Eddie lunges, Sakai can't react to it because he's two seconds behind. Now you see how Sakai is breathing or trying to exhale. Sometimes he, he inhales and he's taking that blood in. Sometimes he tries to blow his nose. And both things are bad for the Japanese fighter here in round five. B Hop, they said, you've got to go do something. You've got to go make something happen. And Eddie Gomez making that difficult for the uh, Japanese fighter based in Mexico. Well, Sakai go out and try to do something. Eddie Gomez was told in his corner to go ahead and make a statement. The trainer told him to go make a statement. And Eddie's nodded his head. Yes, I, I, I'm, I understand. So look for fireworks this round because both fighters have been told they got to do something. Let's take a look at the total punches through five rounds. Round by round, round number four was the most productive for Gomez as well as for Sakai. But you see the total difference, 244 to 153, 91 punch in favor of Gomez when it comes to punches thrown. Not only the quantity, but it's also the quality of those punches for uh, Eddie Gomez that put him ahead in this fight, at least so far. Biggest win of Shoki Sakai's career was a unanimous decision in Las Vegas against Ashley Theophane. He's good had jab. some heartbreaking losses. Good jab by Sakai. He just threw a good one jab that didn't really um, get the effect because of just one. If he got to let that left hand, that right hand go behind him. The jab is a stiff jab like he just did to the belly. He must throw that right hand if he want to get Gomez's attention. And Gomez got Sakai's attention because you mentioned how his guard is up. He went around the glove and landed right to the ear. And then you see the one-two shots from Eddie Gomez, who's just very comfortable there. But if he sits on his punches, like you said, B-Hop, and how his corners asked him to do, he really could do some more damage to Sakai. Well, he sat on two left hooks just now, and it was right on the money. This now, he just threw a left hand right Breaking in the left hand. Up. And he's splitting the guards of, of Sakai. He's splitting the guards. He's coming up with that left hand. Gomez coming up with that left hand and trying to split the guards now. A warning for Gomez. Beto, what's going on in uh, Gomez's corner? They really like the way that he's looking. They're telling them to pick it up a little bit more. They feel like they can put more pressure and take Sakai out. Also, you'll hear his corner, but you'll also hear some Spanish as Marcos Caballero is now shouting instructions. So they're really impressed with the way Eddie Gomez is looking right now. We're all pretty impressed with the way he's looking. Beto, thank you very much for giving us that insight into what's going on in the corner here through the first six rounds. The nose continues to bleed for Shoki Sakai. And you know, this ref is letting them fight inside. He's letting them break it, you know, let them break themselves up. And you know, that's a good referee. That's a veteran referee. That's not jumping in there every time they clinch. Good combinations there. From E boy Eddie Gomez is round six comes to an end the scheduled eight round fight. Co feature leading up to Jason Quigley taking on Freddie Hernandez in middleweight is this bout between Eddie Gomez and the white trunks trimmed in the zebra print in honor of his father. This is for you, Pop, say his trunks. His father passed away last Saturday, October the 13th, right before Eddie was supposed to travel to California from the New York and Connecticut area for this fight. And he's fighting like a man on a mission. Sharp, spit the guards, left jab, or left uppercut, really. Uppercut slash hook. I mean, Eddie has beautiful combinations. And when he focused and he let those punches go, you see a whole new different, different fighter. See the head movement 
quick counter punching ability of Eddie Gomez. And, and he's a type of fighter that he's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When he's at his best, he's putting on a performance like we're seeing tonight. He's comfortable, he's fluid, he's using his uh, physical attributes. And when he's not, he's trying to get in firefights and getting caught and his chin gets exposed. All right, we're in the, to round seven of this fight and Eddie Gomez getting close to 100 punches landed while Sakai is halfway to that number. And, and that's not a good formula against a fighter as defensively gifted as Eddie Gomez is. One thing I say that Eddie um, should look at this fight um, and, and understand that the body attack would have been so important early on in the fight where those guards of the hands would have been at least halfway down and he can work upstairs. Right now, um, he still can go ahead and start working in body. I wouldn't abandon it, but it would have done him a, really a big, big justice if he did got that body working early. You see the movement of Gomez never stepping straight back, always looking for an angle out. And Sakai unable to close off those exits. Sakai got the better stiff, harder jab if he use it enough. You can see every time he use it, it's effective. But not if you're lazy with it and allow your opponent to counter like Gomez tried to do there with the overhand right. Well, he got to pick his spots when he throw the jab. He got to make sure the jab is, is coming where Gomez is even either retreating or jumping in. Oh, that's a slip, a push from Sakai on Gomez. Not an official knockdown for those of you scoring at home. Still, that could be a psychological boost for Sakai because your man is down. No matter how he got down, you see him on the ground, he got to get up. That's energy. So a lot of times that sparks uh, the opponent. Oh, nice left yeah, hook to the lever down. from yes, Gomez that Sakai takes here at the yes, close yes. of round number seven. Eighth round between Eddie Gomez fighting with a heavy heart in honor of his father who passed away this past Saturday, taking on Shoki Sakai, who for me has been shut out for the first seven rounds. And the instructions in the corner, B-Hop, were very clear for Gomez. Yeah, I mean, sit down, let those punches go, basically make a statement. And you know what, Eddie Gomez is in a position to do that, because Sakai is not Sakai is not changing his style. He's going to continue to keep the earmuffs up and throw those stiff jabs every now and then, but not consistent with it. But his corner in uh, Danny Valle, particularly telling Eddie Gomez, because he would ask him, you want me to go out there and fight? He's like, yeah, but be intelligent. Don't get into a firefight. Control the fight in the center of the ring and put on a show. And Eddie Gomez has the IQ to do that. I like to see him be more aggressive, but let his hands go because he has a style. He's winning the fight, but make a statement. Now it's time to make a statement. That's a nice uppercut in movement from Eddie Gomez. Not many fighters can do that, but if you get caught while you're floating, you know, you can get uh, dropped. So it's just Sakai not really effective in the way he's throwing his punches. He's picking his punches and he's not throwing enough of them. And that's why he's beginning to counter punch round after round after round because if he do get, when he do get one punch in, it's not effective because he's not putting the right hand on that foot behind him. But now there's a slight cut, it looks like, under the right eye of Shoki Sakai. Yeah, he's been taking a lot of leather, and you take a lot of leather like that, you're gonna have bruises, you're gonna have cuts, and you know, in the same style. He haven't changed his style since the first round. Nice job to the body there from Eddie Gomez, who follows it up with a nice uppercut. Sakai with a counter right hand, wanting to get back into this fight, knowing that even coming in, B-Hop, he told us, I know I'm the B-side fighter. I'm used to being the B-side fighter. I know that coming in, I need a knockout. He hasn't fought with that urgency against Gomez. One thing you can say about Sakai, he still continue to come forward. He still continues to try to throw the punches that he's limited to. Nice. Short up, right uppercut just now. But it's nothing on those punches. Eddie Gomez is taking a little bit more chances. He still has to be careful. Last half minute of this eighth and final round. And Eddie Gomez very close to completing the type of performance, B-Hop, that would have made his father very, very proud. I mean, a win is a win is a win, but you know, I like to see him do a little bit more. 
Um, maybe he will, but ain't that much time. And he showed a lot going through the changes he had to go through. That's right. A very emotional win here, or should be an emotional performance for Eddie Gomez against Shoki Sakai, who goes the distance with him after all that's been probably one of the toughest weeks in the life of Eddie Gomez with the passing of his father, El Sevio. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Fantasy Springs Resort Casino, let's get a big Indio round of applause for these two warriors going all eight rounds here in the center of the ring this evening. We now go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. All three judges, Edward Hernandez Sr., Alejandro Rochin, and Zachary Young scored this one 80-72. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from the Bronx, New York City, Eddie Gomez! No doubt. Eddie Gomez with a shutout victory in honor of his father, and he wanted to share this very special moment with his daughter, Bihap.